The Chargers had their worst game on offense all year, only scoring 10 points against the Ravens. And listen, man, the Ravens, they got a great defense, but how exactly did they manage to shut down Justin Herbert in this Chargers offense? Well, I got the film, so while I pull it up and find out, make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, man. It helps me out so much. And let's look at Justin Herbert and this Ravens defense. Now, the first play that I want to show you guys is actually a win for the Chargers. Gerald Everett right here, the tight end, he's just going to be running a deep crosser over the middle of the field. And we have this safety playing up closer to the line of scrimmage. He's just going to run right by him. A little bit of contact right there. But because we have that safety playing so far up, we have single high safety in the deep part of the field. And Justin Herbert looking this way, it's gonna bring that safety down to this side. And so he doesn't like this first read. Okay, let me look at my second read. Jalen Guyton, I don't like this either because this cornerback has the outside leverage. And so he's getting under pressure. He starts rolling out to his right side. Gerald Everett calling for this ball because he knows this is single high safety going down this side of the field because Justin Herbert's eyes were down there. And now he extends this play goes and throws it off platform to Gerald Everett, gets hit by Jadeveon Clowney right after he throws that ball, and it's still perfectly in stride to Gerald Everett. This is what Justin Herbert can do as a quarterback against a defense that's really good like the Ravens are, and you're going to see just how good they are. Let me know what you guys think about this one, because I think this is a mistake right here by Justin Herbert. Not a huge one, but still, this could have been a big play. Look at Keenan Allen going over the middle. He's going to pass this guy, and now he's going to get the deep leverage on this guy. And look, Justin Herbert under pressure. He even pump fakes this a little bit, but then he tucks it back, and he starts rolling out to this side trying to pick up yardage. But look at where this defender is compared to where Keenan Allen is. There is no way that this guy can compete for the ball if he lasered that thing in there into that wide open space of the field. This could have been a big play for Keenan Allen, but instead he's just going to roll out to this left side and he's going to pick up about five or six yards. And look at it from this angle. We're, we're going to see that pump fake, fake the run. And then he looks over the middle of the field to Keenan Allen, does that little pump fake right there. And then just kind of starts rolling to his left as if the pressure is more impactful on the play than it actually is. I think maybe he's starting to be affected that, by that pressure when it's not really even there. But I don't want you to think that there was never any pressure in this game because there was. Matt Abuike working on Zion Johnson and also Jadeveon Clowney working on Trey Pipkins. They are both going to get pressure on this play, forcing Justin Herbert to roll out to his right side, scramble for his life, basically. This was a very minimal gain, but also the man that is really good at protecting Justin Herbert this year, really the only one that's doing a good job, is Rashawn Slater. Look at him working on Odafe Owe. Gets a little help by that tight end, Gerald Everett. But the spin move into the pancake. Boom! Slam him on the ground, bro. You love seeing that, but you hate seeing your quarterback having to run out of the pocket anyways. Now, this is a great play by Brandon Stevens at the bottom of the screen right here. We're going to have a fake run, play action pass. Justin Herbert's going to run and go deep in this drop back because... We don't trust the protection up front, and also Justin Herbert has a huge cannon of an arm anyway, so he can throw it from anywhere on the field. He gets on that last step of the drop, looks downfield. Jalen Guyton is not really open. Donald Parham's not open, so he has to scramble out to his left side. Brandon Stevens sees this. He's on Donald Parham, looks to see Jalen Guyton is the only man that Justin Herbert's really going to want to throw to, and he peels way back and gets Jalen Guyton in double coverage right here. Justin Herbert throws it anyways, and this ball is obviously incomplete. The only man who could have competed for that was a Ravens defender, but also what Justin Herbert needs to realize here is once Brandon Stevens uh, peels back right here and sees that this is the target that he's trying to throw to, you instead get off of him and you look at your check down. Joshua Kelly is wide open at the bottom of the screen right here. He's even putting his hands up, calling for it. And there is nobody on this side of the field that would have tackled him before he even gets to like the 40 yard line. But really good play by Brandon Stevens anyways, by understanding what the Chargers are trying to do. Now this is a cover three disguised look for the Ravens. This man at the top of the screen is getting the deep third, as well as this man and this man. Kyle Hamilton is vacating this area because Jadeveon Clowney is backing up into that zone, and he's just going to take this outside zone towards the sideline. But if you look, that's going to leave Donald Par Parham wide open right up the seam for a split second right here. Justin Herbert in his throwing motion. This is going to be a big pickup, but he throws it to Keenan Allen instead, who is double covered. And on top of that, 
He loses the ball because of the hit by Jadeveon Clowney in coverage. This is a really good play for the Ravens defense. And if Justin Herbert was able to identify what is going on right here, then this would have been a big play to Donald Parham. But he's unable to do so because it was a really good disguised look by this Ravens defense. Now, this is man coverage for the Ravens. And look, one of the best route runners in the league, one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Stevens. And he's going to stick with him this whole way. But this is just a perfect throw and a perfect catch. There's no way that you can really defend that. He ends up making the tackle, really secure tackler there. But look at the top of the screen because if you look at the beginning of this play, this is very close press man coverage. And at the top, this man is playing so far off of Quentin Johnson. If Justin Herbert looked this way rather than the bottom of the screen, I understand that that's probably his read progression, his bottom to Keenan Allen first. But look at the spacing that Quentin Johnson has once he gets that curl on this route. Rather than Keenan Allen, who is still developing, and he's just completely smothered by Brandon Stevens. I mean, still, it's a first down because Justin Herbert threw that ball perfectly. But give Quentin Johnson a shot, you know? So what the Ravens do a lot is they have their outside corners playing the outside leverage. And you can see on both sides of the screen, that's what's going on. They're playing numbers to the sidelines, while these guys on the inside in the second level are responsible for the middle of the field. And if anyone goes out into the flat, like this guy's chasing him now, and this man is chasing him. And then we have the guys deep over the middle of the field as well. On this play, we're going to have the safety go out to the side where Gerald Everett is. And it's going to leave two of our linebackers in the middle of the field still, rather than just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And the reason that is important is because this ball actually ends up being dumped off to Austin Eckler. And he gets hit, first of all, by, I think that's Patrick Queen. And then Roquan Smith comes in and they're able to force the fumble on this play. That is the second turnover in the row for this Ravens defense, back-to-back -back fumbles. Something that I actually just noticed on this play as well is because these guys from the inside of the field are having to fly out towards the outside, it creates traffic for these outside receivers to develop their deep routes. And by the time that they are starting to get into those breaks right there, you can see Justin Herbert has already stepped up in the pocket because of the pressure. So he really has nowhere to go other than the dump off option right here in Austin Eckler. And also look at Keenan Allen by the time he gets this break off. Brandon Stevens touching grass. Ooh, it's just a missed opportunity, man. But they're creating traffic for those wide receivers because those guys on the inside are flying out. And also because these guys are rushing the passer so quickly that it just speeds up the offense so much and it gets them out of rhythm. Now, this is a really nice shifty move by Quentin Johnston right here. He's going to do this little jab step right here and then cut back towards the inside, get that inside leverage off the linebacker. That was a really nice move, but this ball gets thrown right to him and he's just completely smothered by Roquan Smith. So what did he do wrong? Well, I'm going to argue he did nothing wrong. And this is actually on Justin Herbert because he's looking towards this side of the field. And then he looks towards Quentin Johnson. There's that jab step. And now, boom, he needs to throw this ball, have that timing right there. But he's just late on the throw. It allows Roquan Smith to come back into this play. And also, I think it's kind of disrupted a little bit by the pressure from Michael Pierce on this play. I just want to give a quick shout out to Kyle Hamilton. He was a dog this entire game. He sees what's going on right here, knows this is an RPO, stays committed to this screen pass, engages with Jalen Guyton, and basically runs right through him and gets the one-on-one -on -one tackle while being blocked on Keenan Allen for the tackle for loss. This is such a high level play by Kyle Hamilton. This is how you beat the Ravens defense. Like I said, this outside corners are always in the outside leverage. The inside guys have the inside leverage unless a running back or somebody comes out in the flat right here. You see this man having to go up for Gerald Everett. And this man who has the inside leverage on this side of the field has to fly up for Austin Eckler. And it leaves this middle of the field a little bit vacant right here for Quentin Johnson because we have this linebacker having to pick up Keenan Allen. Justin Herbert throws this ball and there's just no separation for Quentin Johnston on this play. And the reason why is because of the blitz. This linebacker vacates this middle of the field. So we only have one linebacker in the middle who is going for Keenan Allen. And Justin Herbert, under pressure, has to get rid of this ball. And it's just, I mean, even if he had time, I don't think this is a completion just because of the defense by Brandon Stevens on Quentin Johnson. This is just great defense all around. We're seeing later in the game that the Chargers are picking up how to beat this Ravens defense. This outside man is just gonna play the outside leverage. We have Kyle Hamilton having to go and pick up the flat man. And we have the linebacker having to pick up this receiver because he's curling right here. 
we just run these double curls because we know Jalen Guyton is going to be open. And if he's not, then Austin Eckler is going to be open in the flat. Kyle Hamilton is playing kind of both of these guys in between them. And Justin Herbert just dots up Jalen Guyton and it's a dropped pass. I mean, it's a good play call. This is a good play design on how to beat this defense. Kyle Hamilton does about as well as he can do right here, playing both of these guys, just playing in between them so he doesn't get beat bad on either target. But you got to catch these if you're Jalen Guyton. And also, I do like what I'm seeing from Kellen Moore actually calling plays that can beat this defense. Now, this is just a screen pass for Austin Eckler. And look at the linebackers, Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, flying downfield so fast. Boom! Laying the wood on Austin Eckler. And the reason why this play works, I'm going to take it back, is because Michael Pierce is hogging up Zion Johnson and he can't get out in space and pick up the linebacker like he's supposed to. And also because Will Clapp doesn't even really get a hand on his man. That's why both of these linebackers, look at it from this angle, Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith are flying downfield, basically unblocked, to just break up this play instantly. They just completely blew it up. Jadeveon Clowney beats Trey Pipkins here. And look at this move. It's not really anything special. He just kind of runs right into him and tries to club that hand away and rip through it. He's not even really able to, but he gets to Justin Herbert and gets that ball sack of him, and the Ravens are ending up with this ball. I mean, th this move by Jadevian Clowney is nothing special, but he just completely outhandles Trey Pipkins, outmaneuvers him, and outstrengths him to Justin Herbert to get that sack. Now look at this. We're going to have Jalen Guyton running a deep crosser over the middle of the field on Kyle Hamilton. Justin Herbert looking at the top of the screen. Doesn't like Keenan Allen on Brandon Stevens. Looks over the middle now. He has Odafe Owe in his face. Throws off his back foot, trying to loft it in there. And it's just off target. Look at it from this angle because you'll see it better. Just a move instantly to beat Rashawn Slater. Off that back foot, Justin Herbert throws it. Oh, just out of his reach. This was a missed play. And really, look at Rashawn Slater the whole way through on this one. Just gets beat by Odafe Owe by the speed towards the inside. Fourth down and the Chargers need this one to stay in the game. And the Ravens are calling an all-out blitz on this side. This linebacker is coming. This is Roquan Smith. And that's going to leave this area of the field wide open for a Chargers receiver to go to. And the Ravens pull back Michael Pierce, the big 500-pound defensive tackle, from his rushing position to cover this zone. Unfortunately for the Chargers, they're not able to get anything by the time he gets there. And he doesn't get there quickly. But look at Justin Herbert before this play because he understands that they're probably bringing pressure off this left side. He's calling for a different play. And then you're going to see he looks over to his left side after this little cadence right there. And then he does a hand motion to the receiver, almost as if he's signaling, hey, I'm going to need to get this ball off quick. And he, he can't do anything, as you can see, because none of these receivers are turning around to even compete for a catch. They don't even know what's going on. And Michael Pierce is already there by the time that these guys are turning around. And Justin Herbert can't do anything, man. This is what I'm saying. The speed and the rhythm, the timing of this offense was all the way off. And Michael Pierce is already in zone coverage by the time that Justin Herbert gets sacked on this play, bro. Come on. So... A lot of mistakes by this Chargers offense, but yes, that Ravens defense is absolutely legit. Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Kyle Hamilton, Brandon Stevens, even all of those guys had a really good game. But the Chargers just missed some opportunities as well. If you want to see my video from yesterday talking about the real issue with the Chargers, then you should probably click this one right here.